I'm really sorry to tell you that this is not only a risk factor when it comes to exacerbating your tinnitus, but it also contributes to you developing a hearing loss too. Hey guys, it's Matthew here from Hearing Tracker, keeping you up to date with all things hearing related. I imagine that you've arrived here today after spending hours searching online for a cure for tinnitus. However, this is a video with a twist. Instead of trying to help you to find a cure for your tinnitus, this video should help you to identify things that are either causing or making your tinnitus worse so that you can look at eliminating them from your life completely. On the Hearing Tracker channel, we cover a vast range of ear-related subject matter. And whilst there's a massive amount that I talk about when it comes down to technology and how that can help with hearing, including with tinnitus, technology isn't always the only solution. If you're keen on keeping up to date with the latest news in the hearing technology world, then make sure that you subscribe to this channel, press that grey notifications bell, and you'll be updated every time we release a new video. If you've seen any of my previous tinnitus related videos, then you'll know that I can relate to all of you out there suffering with tinnitus, as I also suffer with tinnitus myself. It's in both ears, it's there all the time, it's a high pitched tone around about 12 kilohertz, and I've had it since I can remember. And there are a number of times when it fluctuates or even spikes. Sometimes I can put my tinnitus spikes down to certain things, such as if I'm tired, stressed or unwell, but there are other occasions when for no apparent reason whatsoever, it seems to take over. Now, I have my own coping mechanisms and I've covered the most effective ways to overcome your tinnitus in this separate video, which it may be worth watching after you finish this video today. So the big question is, what exactly is a tinnitus spike? Essentially, it means different things to different people, but often comes in two different changes to your tinnitus, either a change in the volume or a change in the tone. The other question is, does this mean it's the beginning of something more that you need to worry about? Absolutely not. Tinnitus spikes can often feel like they're completely random, but there are both external and internal factors that can contribute to your tinnitus getting worse, with some of them being easier to regulate or control than others. First of all, let's start off by talking about your ears being exposed to loud sounds. Now, I'm intentionally starting off with loud sounds today as I think that this is without question the easiest thing that you can look at controlling in your day-to-day -day life. We've all been through the experience of stepping out of a loud environment, whether it's a club, concert or wedding, with ringing ears which can last for a few days and sometimes weeks. Now, because ears are incredibly hardy, they can repair themselves from the damage caused by this exposure to loud sounds. However, that repairing process won't continue forever. We live in an incredibly noisy world and it's virtually impossible to avoid noise on a daily basis, whether that's walking down the street, heading into a bar or club or watching fireworks. Tinnitus can be triggered as easily as when an emergency vehicle is driving past. Now, some of these are more avoidable than others. And in my opinion, the key is to protect your ears whenever you feasibly can. Now, I'm not suggesting that you wear hearing protection 24 seven, as this can actually have the reverse effect and make you even more sensitive to loud sounds, which is a condition known as hyperacusis. But if you know you're going somewhere where you'll be exposing yourself to loud sounds, then I would definitely recommend wearing some form of hearing protection. Hearing protection comes in plenty of different forms, and that's something else that we review here on the Hearing Tracker channel. So I'll link some of our hearing protection videos in the description to today's video. They can range from the easy to use foam earplugs, which you screw up and push into your ears, generic plugs with attenuation filters built in, or my personal favorite, which are custom made to the shape of your ear, which also have filters built into them. So whilst they reduce the amount of dangerous sounds that you're exposed to, they still allow you to communicate with people around, and if you're at a concert, for example, they still allow you to hear the music without it distorting, as you may experience with the standard foam earplugs. Anxiety, depression and stress are some of the most common contributors to your tinnitus appearing worse. And if only it were a case of me saying to you, well, get rid of your stress and your tinnitus will disappear. I'm often told by patients in clinic that it's their tinnitus causing their stress, but it's rarely thought that the stress is causing the tinnitus, which is more often the case. Now, there are theories out there that 50% of your tinnitus is physiological and caused by some kind of underlying physical damage, and the other 50% of your tinnitus is psychological. More often than not, it isn't possible to do anything to resolve the physiological damage, as whatever the physical cause of the tinnitus, it's there to stay. That doesn't mean that it's anything to be worried or concerned about, and most of the time it's non-life-threatening. However, that means that we need to look at doing something to help you to overcome the tinnitus from a psychological element instead. 
After all, it makes sense, doesn't it? Why else would it be possible for the tinnitus to get better or worse if we're tired, stressed or unwell? There's nothing physiological changing, it's all going on up here. The purpose of this video is for me to advise you what to avoid to overcome your tinnitus, and it's tough for me to advise you to avoid stress. Stress goes a little bit deeper than that. So rather than me telling you to avoid stress, anxiety or depression, there are a couple of avenues that you need to go down to make that happen. Firstly, it's really important you try to identify what those stress-causing factors are in your life. Until you're able to identify if your stress is coming from work, your personal life or relationships, then it's difficult to be able to overcome those issues. Second of all, there are productive actions that you can take to help you to counteract those factors, such as doing more exercise, whether that's running, heading to the gym or doing yoga. And if you've tried that and it hasn't worked, then it's worth looking into cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT and mindfulness, which can make a huge difference. They can help you to change your brain's response to your tinnitus and reverse the negative emotional feelings towards it. Stress and tinnitus are a huge challenge. I've seen it time and time again that patients are overwhelmed by their tinnitus, which increases their stress levels. This, of course, then leads to a greater amount of tinnitus and the cycle then continues. CBT and mindfulness come in with the aim to get you out of that never-ending cycle. Research shows that whilst the likes of tinnitus maskers can help to provide momentary relief from your tinnitus, the most effective form of tinnitus relief is to undergo some form of CBT and mindfulness. Another incredibly common cause of tinnitus is a buildup of earwax. This is a nice easy fix and requires a visit to an audiologist to have the wax removed, either using microsuction, irrigation, or mechanically using a variety of tools. Once the wax is removed, you should experience immediate relief from your tinnitus. There are plenty of medications out there that can potentially worsen your tinnitus. These medications can be drugs that you may not even suspect can exacerbate your tinnitus and can originate in both prescription or non-prescription medications. So it's always worth taking a look at the small print on any medication that you're taking. And if you're concerned that you may fall into this bracket, then it's worth a conversation with the doctor who prescribes your current medications rather than altering your medications yourself. There is limited evidence that specifically shows that certain foods will cause a worsening of your tinnitus symptoms. And therefore, it's really difficult to be able to outline certain foods that you should look out for avoiding when it comes to your tinnitus. I would do further reading around any sources that tell you what to avoid, as there are a lot of unjust claims out there not backed up by science. Remember, we're all made up a little bit differently, and what may work very well with one person may not work at all with the next. I'll talk later about keeping a tinnitus journal, and if you suspect that your tinnitus is made worse by certain foods, then I'd recommend keeping a log to see if any patterns emerge over a period of time, and then see what happens if you eliminate those foods or drinks from your diet. Expanding on this, however, it is beyond question that a healthy diet has many beneficial effects on the body, which in turn may lessen the impact of your tinnitus. A health conscious diet can reduce high blood pressure and weight. It can increase blood flow to your body and your auditory system. It can heighten energy levels and improve your emotional well being, all of which are known to improve tinnitus. It would be great to know if any of you out there watching this video have identified any foods or drinks that do cause a tinnitus spike for you. So do let me know in the comments beneath this video. Now, if you're a smoker, I'm really sorry to tell you that this is not only a risk factor when it comes to exacerbating your tinnitus, but it also contributes to you developing a hearing loss too, with research showing that compared to a non-smoker, smokers have a 70% greater chance of developing some form of hearing loss. And the more that you smoke, the more you risk developing that hearing loss. There are a few reasons why smoking has this effect. Firstly, relating to your eustachian tube, which connects the back of your throat to your middle ear and normally equalizes the pressure when you have pressure changes outside of your body, i.e. on a plane or underwater. This can become inflamed and inefficient after smoking, which causes a blockage of the eustachian tube and potentially results in a hearing loss and tinnitus. Secondly, your blood pressure can be affected. Smoking raises your blood pressure and the structures in your ear depend on a good sturdy blood flow. Without your auditory system being fed correctly, your ear and hearing will without question be affected. The scary thing is that this risk isn't just relevant for the smoker themselves. Even if you live with someone and passively smoke, then you're at greater risk of developing both tinnitus and hearing loss too. Sleep deprivation or insomnia is another major factor when it comes to your tinnitus becoming worse. This is also interwoven within my previous points on anxiety. 
When you're lying in your bed, it's potentially the quietest point during your day, and therefore you may become more aware of your tinnitus than at any other point during the day. In itself, this can lead to your head going into overdrive, and then you becoming more anxious and worried that you won't be able to sleep. If your head starts in this downward spiral, which I've been in myself, then again, your tinnitus fuels your anxiety and your anxiety fuels your tinnitus, resulting in a downward slope with sleep being just impossible. The next day you'll be exhausted and again, the anxiety continues to grow until you get to bed and then it repeats itself. So the big question is, what should you do about it? First of all, talk to your doctor. And if medication is the only forward step to help you get some sleep, then seriously consider it just to snap out of that cycle. Try and avoid caffeine during the day as this can disrupt your sleep patterns too. Try to exercise, even if you're tired, to use that little energy that you've got left. And just before you go to bed, have some downtime. Read a book rather than looking at your phone or watching your television. Research is increasingly showing the links between high blood pressure and hearing loss. The connection relates to how your blood moves around your body, including arriving to your ears. And in people with high blood pressure, tinnitus is a commonly reported complaint, with up to 44% of people with tinnitus also having high blood pressure. The connection between the two conditions relates to the vessels in your auditory system. When pressure builds in the system, it can result in tinnitus. Of course, we know that tinnitus can manifest itself in a multitude of different sounds. If you happen to notice a beating or pumping sound, then this could well be related to your blood pressure, so have a chat with your doctor about ways to get your blood pressure down. I find that one great way of attempting to identify what is potentially causing your tinnitus to spike is to keep what I call a tinnitus journal. I recommend to all of my tinnitus patients to record the days where they notice their tinnitus is particularly worse and consider the list that I've just run through, going through each item one by one and writing down if anything internal or external has changed in the days leading up to that spike. Only by following this process can you identify common patterns and factors and find a way to control those factors better. So whilst we have no known cure for tinnitus, there are a lot of tried and tested methods out there which will help to reduce the daily impact that your tinnitus will be having on you on a daily basis. And they work. The challenge is that if you're after a quick fix, I'm afraid you're not going to get it. This does require patience and time, which I get it. When you're having a bad day when it comes to your tinnitus, the last thing that you want is somebody on the internet telling you that you have to be patient with it. In all of my tinnitus videos, I also mention a few types of tinnitus that do require immediate medical investigation. Firstly, pulsatile tinnitus or tinnitus that follows your heartbeat. Second of all, tinnitus if it presents itself in one ear only. Thirdly, if your tinnitus has changed in nature over a very short period of time. And finally, if your tinnitus is causing you not to be able to sleep at all or contributing to your anxiety or depression. If you fall under any of these categories, then it's best to head over to your doctor and they should refer you for further investigation. Also on that note, if you develop a sudden sensory neural hearing loss, either with or without tinnitus, then you need to get yourself off to the emergency room or an urgent care ENT clinic as soon as possible to investigate the cause of that hearing loss and for treatment as soon as possible. I do hope that you found this video useful, guys. If you like this video, then please hit the like button. If you have any questions, then please drop them in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do so. I'll see you in the next video.